God does not save those who save themselves. He said, if you try to save your life, you lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, which is if you rely on me, completely trust in me, then you will save your life. Have that kind of trust that you say, God, I'm throwing myself over to you. I don't know what will happen in my life, but for every situation, I am casting myself to you because I know in you is my safety. If God has rescued you before, you will do it again. It is for you to build your confidence. I can rely on God. He has done it before. He will do it again. In today's video, I just want to encourage you to rely only on God. When we encounter situations and tough times, sometimes we try our best first to see what we can do on our own until we get to the end of ourselves before we want to look up to God. And it's because of our human makeup. We feel like we are independent, that we can do it on our own until we get to a point of realizing that we cannot. And you have to come to a point of knowing, I have to intentionally rely only on God. The emphasis is on the word only. It's not about saying rely on God and on you. God does not save those who save themselves. He said if you try to save your life, you lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, which is if you rely on me, completely trust in me, then you will save your life. So, that statement is not from God. It's not scriptural. The actual scripture is you knowing like a child would see an adult that she or he adores and jump, not fearing whether they will fall because they trust the one whom they are throwing themselves at that they will be caught. So that is the kind of reliance that God says, put your head on me. Like a little child, have that kind of trust that you say, God, I'm throwing myself over to you. I don't know what will happen in my life, but for every situation, I am casting myself to you because I know in you is my safety. When we come to God and feel like we can depend on ourselves, we end up losing out on being able to trust him for things to change in our situation, to trust him for him to walk us through the path of life that we are on, the experience of life or circumstances that we find ourselves in, some of the circumstances we created. Some of us, our stubbornness lead us to it. But most times we are trying to see, let me find a way out. Let me find a way out until you can't do anything. So do not always wait to get to the end of yourself before you find God. Make God your first option. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you before anything else, God first. Before trying to say, okay, I have some strength, I have some technique here, Pray to God and let God lead you. For God works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasures. For whatever situation, God can work in you if you align with him, if you allow him to work in you. If you are susceptible to be directed and bent by him, it is for you to be able to align yourself and rely on him, trust him, let him help you. Don't try to think you can help yourself. Now, let it not just sound like I'm just talking. Let me read a scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Paul Apostle was sharing his experience with the brethren that he does ministry with. And he said to the brethren, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. Now, to explain a little bit about the scripture, Paul is writing to the church in Corinthians, and at this point, he said to them, in our travel journey in Asia, because he went from place to place to preach, let me share with you a little testimony, a little thing that will encourage you of what we experienced. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. Now, this is Paul Apostle, you know, the most famous apostle because he wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. He relied on himself at some point. He said that they were crushed beyond their own ability and strength to endure because they were depending on their strength. And he came to this point, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God. Now, that is where I got this inspiration to tell you to rely only on God. Because when you keep relying on yourself, when you keep saying you can try something, you can do something, God will wait and allow you to get to the end of yourself. And you don't want to be in that situation. 
You don't want God to wait and allow you try on your own till you get tired. You want God to participate with you and help you. So then make him your first option. Make him your first and only option. Not like you have other options. God, try it first. Then if you can't do it, then I will try option B. No, make God your only source, your only hope. Our only hope should be on God. So the truth is, Paul said, and we learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. What does this mean? Like this revelation is powerful. And this is one of the best scriptures that I've held on to. Relying only on God who raises the dead says, if God can raise the dead, there is no other thing in my life. There's no other situation that he cannot de- handle. There's no other problem that I encounter that God cannot handle. If God can raise the dead, then I don't see whatever is happening with me, how difficult it is with him. I don't see whatever is happening around me, how difficult it is for him. Because with him, there's no impossibility. With him, everything is possible. If God can raise the dead, that is the revelation. Then what is my situation? It is just a minor thing for God. And he said, and he did rescue us from mortal danger. They were in a place that they almost died. And he said, God rescued them, him and his fellow brethren that were in the ministry work. And he will rescue us again. Now, this is the place of my lesson. God rescued them and he said, now, because we've relied on God only, God will rescue us again. Whatever trouble may come, whatever issue may come, whatever problem may come, God will rescue us again through Christ Jesus our Lord. God will help us again. God will come through for us again. Since he came through before, he will come through again. And he continued. These three things are three things that I want you to note and I will repeat refresh it once i'm done reading the scripture we have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us lovely he said god rescued us when we relied only on him and he will rescue us again secondly and he will continue to rescue us i want you to hold this to heart in hindsight has God ever been faithful to you? Has God ever come true? Has God ever helped you from any situation? Have God ever saved you in any place in your life? And if you think he has not done, did you wake up today? Yes, you did. So he has rescued you. You don't know the things that God helps you to pass that you do not even have an idea about that would have happened. But God saved you from it. If God has rescued you before, he will do it again. It is for you to build your confidence. I can rely on God. He has done it before. He will do it again. And I can have confidence even for my future that God will keep on being faithful to me. God's faithfulness will not fail me. God will not cease to be faithful to me. That is what this encouragement is. When you rely only on God, you are telling God, I do not have any other hope. I do not have any other place to run to. You are my only source. So you are telling God, here is where i will dwell no other place and that is why scriptures and proverbs says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path now on the last scripture i will read for you concerning trusting wholly in god is for you to know in jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 through 8 it says yahweh said to me i'm reading in the passions translation Even a strong person is caused when his confidence rests in his own strength. To place your confidence in the strength of a man means that you are turning your heart away from me. Hey, that is where I'm saying do not rely even on yourself. Do not rely on any other man that, oh, maybe they promise you something that they're going to make it. They're going to do it for you. Rely only on God. God can make men bless you as he wants. God can do anything in your life. Because this scripture, I want you to go read it down. It says when you depend on yourself or depend on man, that is a place of being like you are going to, you are under a cause. You are under a place that you are being empowered to fail. That is just what it means. It's an empowerment to fail. He said that person is like a desert tumbleweed in a dry and dusty desert, in a rocky wilderness without inhabitants. Even when goodness is all around him, he won't experience it. He says you can see when good is around you, but you cannot touch it. You can't experience it because in your own strength, you don't have the ability to do anything for yourself. But he says, I will bless with happiness the one who trusts in me. The one who trusts in me alone. That is where I say depend only on God. And this is the result of someone that trusts only in God. He is like a tree planted on the river bank, extending its fruit into streams of water. That's like Psalm 1. 
it does not fear when scorching it comes. Like you don't even know when trouble comes because you are in God's arms. He has rescued you before. He will keep on rescuing you. And in the future, you have confidence that he will do that, rescue you. For its leaves remain fresh and never fading even in a year of drought. It has no anxieties but continues to bear luscious fruits. I want you, for whatever thing that you are going through, rely only on God. Amen. And I hope that this video is a blessing to you and will encourage your heart to trust God more and then depend only on him. I am Uwem. This is my YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and like this video and share it. Thank you for watching and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye. Love you.